um, a couple of requests for this particular video. Uh, one of them was Dr. Blue on Twitter, so thanks for that. Um, about how I approached writing music for the Tenth Doctor. So I've already done this theme for the for the Thirteenth for Jody, um, and then we found out that we got David Tennant uh, reprising his role as the Tenth Doctor, which was obviously very exciting. I did for a bit of time explore the idea of using his theme, his uh, um, and then what was the other one? Um, And I, I thought it might be nice to have those themes in, but it just didn't happen. It, it was time, it was legal stuff, it was uh, a lot of things. Um, so it was just far, far simpler for me to write original stuff instead. And until quite late in the day, there were at least two cues where I'd got two different versions of them. So one of them was using Murray Gold's themes for the Tenth Doctor, and then the other one was using... Not necessarily my themes, because I didn't really write him a theme for this, but it was just using my own original music, but written in a way that was evocative of what Murray did. So the, the orchestration of it, the arrangement of it, gives you a flavour, but I wasn't using those melodies and those progressions. And I've got a fairly early proof of concept of, um, of those. So you can have a little listen here of um, how it sounded with Murray's... Tenth Doctor stuff, and then my version that replaced it. I think these are the demos, so the, my version won't be the full orchestra version, but it'll be uh, my fake instrument demo. Blimey! You've had some cowboys in these circuits. You know, I understand Einstein's third theory of relativity, and even he didn't get that one. But I can never work out why a dead battery comes to life again when you sort of give it a little wiggle. Still work, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say. Like me. You've had some cowboys in these circuits. You know, I understand Einstein's third theory of relativity, and even he didn't get that one. But I can never work out why a dead battery comes to life again when you sort of give it a little wiggle. Still work, though. Oh, yeah, I've got to say, I'm the doctor. Just probably not the one you were expecting. Bit? No, mm, teeny bit. Nothing like that. In fact, I reckon... Her? Huh? <laughs> Ooh, I cannot wait to see River's face. She'll be in seventh, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, easily distracted. Did that doctor send you here? A, nobody sends me anywhere. Two, I'm here because of the time glitches sending everything all timey, wimey, lemon and limey. And, small eye, small eye, small eye, a friend of mine gave me a tip off about a million years from now. Or was it last week? Anyway, point is, I need your help. The tenth doctor stuff, to some degree with when, when Murray was writing for the Tenth Doctor, um, but definitely with the way that I've approached it, is a little bit more brass heavy. And I, I don't mean heavy in the sense that it sounds forceful and weighty, but just using brass more, um, even in a lyrical sense, like solo trumpet and stuff. I used to play in a brass band, so I've got a real affection for both brass instruments, but also the fact that, that brass can do the really emotional chorale type stuff and it sounds gorgeous and you don't really hear much of that so I every opportunity I get to write you know interesting stuff for brass I like to do that so um, you'll hear more French horns more trumpets on the stuff that involves the Tenth Doctor in this than you do with with Jody's stuff I think the brass in Jody's stuff for this is a little bit more like the, the fanfare energetic type of brass there you go. That's how I approached writing for the Tenth Doctor. It's acknowledging what Murray Gold had done, because I think it's a missed opportunity if you completely ignore that and try and do something totally new. Um, but at the same time, bringing something new to it and uh, saying something a little bit different with the music. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that.